This is a story about the healing power of connections because we humans are hardwired to connect and we're hardwired to connect because our survival depends on it. But what does this have to do with robots and kids? Well, in 2010, my then 10-year-old son Darcy slid into critical illness. He had a bone marrow transplant and fortunately he survived. And this is where it led. Did you know that up to 30% or just over 1 million students across Australia have an illness serious enough to affect their school attendance? And more than 60,000 of these students are at home or in hospital watching from the sidelines and missing school. Some miss days and weeks and others miss months and even years. And this can really hurt them. These students have increasing risk of academic failure, social isolation, and poor mental health. School non-completion and low career attainment and losses to lifetime productivity put potential lifetime costs per student close to a million dollars. It's an unmet challenge for these students, their siblings and peers, families, teachers and medical professionals, and indeed the whole community. This growing problem affects a diversity of students across all locations. And they're spending more time at home than they are in hospital. Advances in healthcare mean more children are surviving serious illness, uh, living longer th with life limiting illness, and gaining clearer diagnoses. Illness is an authorised absence that pauses school support. And while they remain enrolled at school, these students become invisible. In 2012, I co-founded advocacy group Missing School after my son faced those two years of medical isolation and missed all that school. The organisation Missing School has since engaged in several audits of Australian education law, policy, standards and guidelines. These audits conclude that sick kids across Australia are educationally disadvantaged by critical gaps in policy and indeed practice. These gaps are compounded by an absence of specialised support between school, medical settings and home. There are obstacles to practical support for these kids in accessing their classes and participating in learning on equal terms to their peers. Distance education is often recommended, but it's not the answer because what they need most is presence and belonging. The evidence shows that connection to the regular school promotes academic completion, it supports socialization and protects well-being. We know that all children should be seen and heard and given an equal opportunity to learn if they're to meet their life's potential. And we can't afford to wait until they're well because every day counts. The good news is that we don't have to leave our sick kids behind. With new technologies, we can get sick kids right back to class. Since 2017, I've seen the difference that inclusion can make to sick kids through Missing Schools Australian First Initiative. This initiative is connecting students with serious illness to their classrooms from hospital and home. We're putting telepresence robots into classrooms to enable students who are absent to dial in, see and hear and be seen and heard. These kids can take their lessons in real time in their own classrooms with their own classmates. They control the action by moving their robot through the classroom to take their physical place and space in their school. Now, the human characteristics and interactivity of the robots cultivate greater social attachment with peers through shared social experiences. The robots get named, the robots get dressed up, and the robots tether a lifeline to a sick kid's own community through their toughest times. We know this because we've mapped over 2,000 data points on this robot service. But don't take my word for it. Let's hear it from the kids themselves. I wanted to be at school, but I couldn't, and it made me angry. We missed Ayla a lot, a lot. when she was in she hospital. Too. When I didn't have the robot, it was quite torturing. Mm. 
I think school is supposed to be for making friends so you get more than one friend and learning with your teacher. So Missing School started when my son was in hospital. Uh, he had a bone marrow transplant and missed almost two years of school. And I noticed how, even though he was prepared to go through those treatments and, and deal with the illness itself, what he missed most was being at school, playing with his friends, knowing what was going on, and, and just being a part of that community. My vision is that every child, every student in Australia who misses school because of a serious illness gets to connect to their classroom from wherever they are, whenever they can. It's like having a classroom in my house and a classroom at school. There's a pupil, a robot pupil in the classroom. We are usually doing a, an activity that the whole class are doing together, so Ayla can be part of it. It's almost as if she's still there. It's a pretty easy, straightforward thing for us to do, and it's positive for everyone. Well, we can see her, like, and then she can see us, and she will know what we're doing. The screen's her face, and then this part's the body, and then the things here are the arms, and then the wheels are the legs. I can see my friends in the classroom without having to go there. Connection to the classroom is so important because these kids need their friends in their toughest times. It changed things a lot. I was definitely happier. Confirming missing schools theory of change Parents and teachers report that solving the problem of school absence by using robots helps friendships, eases anxiety, increases participation and supports learning, and reactivates school support. Jensen's mum says, the robot brought life into Jensen's life when he was at his saddest point in treatment and it assisted his motivation for recovery. Robots are cool for school and so affordable it just makes sense. Education departments around Australia have come on board and we have robots operating in public schools in every state and territory. We're working in faith-based and independent schools as well. Now schools are funding robots, policy for robots in schools and hospitals is developing, and there's collaboration for best practice. Three years in, an estimated 3,100 classmates have been reconnected as over 100 students have used telepresence robots. Just over 300 teachers have been trained in their use. Over 1,000 teachers have observed and momentum builds as media and public feedback is positive. One primary school student recently shared with Prime Minister Scott Morrison how one of our telepresence robots gave him access to school and his friends despite a long illness. You see, our education standards don't limit equality to physical presence. So robots, just like access ramps, can give our sick kids an unmistakable presence in their schools. While Australia has the legislation to bring education equality to sick kids, we urgently need the policy to scale up the use of robot technology with wraparound services for sick students during their absences. And by putting the robot technology in schools, we are driving that education policy to catalyze permanent change for these students. And here's an example. Through a Churchill Foundation Fellowship and University of Queensland Centre for Policy Futures, I've recently drafted a policy paper on this issue with five recommendations that can take Australia a step further. And with proof of concept in New South Wales public schools, we have partnered with the hospital school Westmead to map a lean service model. In pilot, this would lead to a governance sound approach to scaling the use of telepresence robots across New South Wales public schools for six students. Existing governance mechanisms and new opportunities are being considered to move this forward. And how has a small organisation like ours done this? Well, we're taking theory 
and practice and the evidence from that into the policy work. We didn't wait for the policy to come first. And it shows how big systemic problems can be tackled by combining the strengths of not-for-profits, the private sector and government, and in this case, using robot technology. We haven't employed lots of people. We've simply tapped into the existing capacity across the whole ecosystem of the problem. Because this idea of school connection for sick kids has been shining a very bright light. And these robots have done something very special. I wish you could be there for that first moment of reconnection. The looks on faces in that first moment, it's priceless. When we started, Australia was first in the world to be using a mobile robot like the OmniLabs robot we use across all education systems across a whole country to address the isolation felt by sick students. But what if one day this is just business as usual? Why not make missing school a thing of the past, a time when every sick student in Australia, everywhere, every day, can stay connected with their own school through a robot? And as far as social isolation goes, we don't need to stop there. We've taken the lessons learned from three years of experience in robot service integration in risk-sensitive environments and we've pulled the concept into a sister social enterprise called Robots for Good to make telepresence robots available in a range of other care settings. Settings such as health, aged care and disability, even new ways to care for workforce. Bringing greater opportunities, greater access, presence, connection, participation and independence. We believe we've only scratched the surface on what can be achieved with telepresence robot technology. Imagine these robots making futures brighter because we humans are hardwired to connect and we're hardwired to connect because our survival depends on it.